Hello and welcome. I've made it a bit of a mission here on this channel to cover as many of the large luxury MPVs that are available in the Chinese market as possible. And thankfully, I am not alone in my quest because today I am joined by none other than Mr. Elliot Richards. Elliot, welcome. Thank you for having me again. Thank you for joining us. So Elliot, you were here when we covered our first large luxury MPV, none other than the legendary Toyota Alphard. Now, I think both of us thought that there was no way another car was going to come along and challenge the uh, in-your-face styling, the front-end styling of the Alphard, but I think maybe we have a, a new champion, perhaps? I think we probably do. We maybe do. So this is the Zeker 009, China's first large luxury full electric MPV, and we're going to give you a first glimpse at it today. With hands-on test drives and reviews of exciting Chinese market vehicles, Wheelsboy is the number one source for China Auto Insights. Be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Zeker is a high-end EV brand from Geely, one of China's biggest and best-known automakers. Their first vehicle was the 001, which remains the only high-end EV wagon available in China. So Elliot, before we dive into this amazing thing right <laughs> next to us, I think we need to talk a little bit about how we got here. Because for people watching whose only context for MPVs, or what we call in the US minivans mostly, is something like when I had in my youth a Plymouth Voyager or a Ford Windstar or like a Toyota Sienna or something, this is, this is really out there. So how, how did we get here? Do you remember when you, you were younger and minivans and MPVs were like practical family haulers? Yeah, they were, you know, relatively cheap, relatively, you know, simple designs. And now we've come all the way to like this mega luxury MPV, which has got all of the bells and whistles. Right. It's just one of those things where this design, like this segment, which is in theory, at least about creating the most comfortable, most spacious passenger cabin has now become kind of a war to see who can create the most out there styling on an MPV. Yes. Like it, it's, it's amazing. So we've already covered the Toyota Alphard on this channel. We've covered things like the Buick GL8. They've all got this crazy in your face kind of styling. And it's just not something people expect when it comes to minivans. It's certainly very striking. Yes, yes. It's definitely eye catching and attention getting. And that's exactly what matters in this category. But Elliot, let's talk about what's right here. Okay, Elliot, now let's get to what everyone, including us, <laughs> yeah. wants to get to. And that is talking about the front end design on this car because Wow, I, I mean, just look at it. What is the first thing that you notice when you walk up to the car? I mean, it's, it's obviously the grill, right? <laughs> obviously. Yes, so I will tell you, based on what they told me, this design, their name for it, Fountain of Light. Okay. The reason is, and it's not lit right now, but we'll insert a shot of it lit, there are 32 individual LED lights embedded in this grill. And similar to other like high-end luxury kind of like EVs, you know, the uh, Hi-Fi X, yeah. they've got this kind of uh, ceremonial lights that they can do. Okay. This can do all sorts of different things. I'm sure it can do like a rainfall or whatever. <laughs> and what I think about is, can you imagine seeing this thing come up behind you at night? Like you would think you were like going to be an, or isn't an alien invasion or something <laughs> on the highway. Um, what about, what else do you see? I really like these lights because I think they're so striking. Like I think we said earlier that most EVs have that kind of straight one yes. light. This has got five yes. in this kind of cool shape. I really like that. It is super cool. It's interesting. It's like we're used to seeing, as you said, kind of like your Neos and stuff have a single slit of a DRL or a light running across. This thing definitely has what is certainly, in my opinion, the most unique daytime running light that I've ever seen, which is this U-shaped five-part unit here. And again, I think it. I think it's the coolest detail on the front end for sure. Definitely unique. Definitely unique. Now, speaking about the front end, is there any other, does this remind you of anything? <laughs> yes, it's a good question. I think this definitely has vibes of the Rolls Royce Cullinan. Yes, it does. Now, I completely agree with you. And it turns out that the designer of this car, who we met, a very nice, very tall German man, 
um, he used to design for high-end luxury brands like Audi and Bentley. So I think he kind of brought along that luxury <laughs> aesthetic that it got to be in your face, got to be yeah. eye-catching thing. And I got to say, couldn't have chosen a better canvas. And he's got a lot of space to <laughs> fill here. So I'm sure they gave him plenty of... Uh, I'm actually very glad they gave him room to roam. Yes. And to come up with something very unique. Because regardless of what you think about this design, whether you love the way it looks or you don't like the way it looks, you have to admit, nothing else looks like this on the road. Elliot, I want to ask you a question. Okay. And I'm letting you know it's a trick question in advance. <laughs> what do you think the drag coefficient of this car is? I mean, look at it. It's, it's quite large. <laughs> Uh, it's quite square. It's quite square. I'm imagining the drag, co drag coefficient will be at over 0 0.3. Would you believe me if I told you this thing was 0 0.27? Absolutely no way. What? <laughs> Which is almost the same as a BMW i8. What? Yes. How is that possible? I have no idea. They've got, there's an active air intake down here. Um, which I should not lean my mic towards because it's making a lot of noise, but there's an active, there's an active air intake down here. And there's all sorts, of course, I'm sure little things that they've done, but I read that on the piece of paper and I was like, that is absolutely crazy. 0.27, I couldn't believe it. But listen, let's check out the rest of the car. Yeah, let's do it. The 009 signature front fascia will be available in both chrome and body color for those looking for something a bit more subtle. Coming around to the side of the 009, we have what is a pretty aggressive design language for an MPV, starting with these very pronounced fender flares that have been kind of pressed into the body, into the metal of the body. One thing I want to point out is up here, this very interesting A-pillar. They have inserted a piece of glass, and I think they've done it in a very subtle way that almost makes it look as though this glass is all wrap around. This is obviously to create more natural light for the interior and also to create a better view for the driver. These MPVs have huge dashboards up here and it's a little bit hard to see the corner of the car. This is definitely gonna help with that. One other thing I wanna point out here, these are more traditional door handles. They are electrically operated, but they do stick out. Now, they managed to achieve a 0.27 coefficient to drag with traditional door handles like this. I think these were chosen because this is an MPV. You're going to be carrying around people, some of whom won't be familiar with the car. So if you had a recessed door handle, like say a Tesla or something, that might create a little bit of confusion. I have driven or ridden rather in other MPVs or other cars that have those handles. And honestly, people sometimes put a sticker on there, an ugly sticker to explain how to open the door handle. So I think this was a good idea. I want to point out as well, this car has quite a bit of metal on top of the greenhouse, on top of the glass area here. Now that's going to create, hopefully, a lot more headroom inside of the car, but you worry about having an unbalanced design because you have too much metal up here in it, having it end up looking like a work van or something. To avoid that, they've inserted this piece of dark chrome here, which kind of helps to balance out the design and make it look a little bit less top heavy. Final couple of notes, we have a very interesting the C pillar design with these chrome stripes or stripes here, streaks, which are mirrored by indentations at the top. And then finally, 19 inch wheels. I really quite like the design of these. They have a very galactic feeling to me. So if the front end is very striking, the back end is a lot more restrained. And this carries over a lot of the design elements from the Zika 001, their first car in this kind of LED light along the back here. A couple of other things I want to point out. There's a cheeky camera up here, hidden very well, and a couple of cameras here, which is gonna help you reversing and driving it around. The other thing I wanna point out is the boot. Now, in most MPVs, you don't actually get a lot of boot space. The, the, the last row of seats is often right at the back of the car, whereas this actually has space for seven pieces of luggage, which is incredible for a car of this size and can fit six passengers. There's also a frunk. Okay, Elliot, now we're on the inside. And like I said, we obviously, the second row is the real, where the show really is, but this car has to be driven, right? So it's good to check out the front row and see what that's like, what the driver experience is like. My first comment, this seat's pretty darn comfortable, actually. Yeah, they are. They're very nice, they're very soft. They're decently supportive here. This. This fits even my, my American, I think an American could fit in this. And that is an impressive thing to say. Um, 
I'm told that the interior styling is inspired by Chinese gardens and flowing water. Mm, interesting. So, indeed. And so what we're seeing is a lot of very flowy designs across the door jam here. Um, I'm noticing a lot of metal. Yeah, it's actually real metal because it's cold to the touch. It is cold to the touch. This is real metal. We we have a Yamaha speaker system. We don't know exactly how many speakers it has, how many watts. Again, this is a pre-production model. These things haven't been determined yet, but I would say from the outside, it looks quite nice. What's yeah? So apart from the metal grill speakers, what's your first impression of material quality here? I think material quality in here is very high. The, the you know the stitching, the leather, you know the. Just everything's just very well put together, I think. It really does feel pretty high end. And the problem is in a lot of these MPVs that like the back is really, really nice. Mm. And then you go to the front row and they're like, that's just for the driver. It doesn't <laughs> matter as much. But the amount of soft touch materials, the leather, I mean, it's soft touch. It's decent material quality. Even if this, even this dashboard piece up here that no one's ever, no one's ever going to touch way up there yeah. is a decent material quality. And that actually impresses me quite a bit. I, I think the one, the one, the best material in here is this. Whoa, whoa! <laughs> and that is everywhere. This is this is suede. I mean, or Alcantara. I, I think I remember them saying it's legit real suede. Yeah. But regardless, it feels fantastic. And it's, it's padded. I mean, it's fully padded. It's not just a thin layer of suede on top of a hard plastic piece. This is real padding right here. And I guess my first thought is why? Why do you need to have that much padding? Maybe for sound absorption? I reckon to keep it as quiet as possible. Keep NVH down. Because yeah. I mean you put in these big pieces of glass and that really doesn't help NVH, but that's gonna that's gonna lower it a little bit. So that's 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 super nice. Um, we do have two screens here. Uh, this looks to be about 10.25 inch instrument cluster screen. We also have a 15.4 inch, I believe that they said, uh, central infotainment screen. We won't mess with this too much because this is pre-production and so a lot of this is not the final software for the vehicle. Um, they did, however, include a little button that's got their very distinctive face <laughs> on it. So that's that's a very good uh, that's a very good little feature there. But wireless charging pad shifter here, very nice little subtle shifter. Yeah, leather clad. I like that. And then a decent amount of storage space, both here between the seats and then down here as well. There is a ooh rubberized. Oh, is it? Rubberized lower storage area. Not every brand gets that right. Some of them are very slippery and that bothers us here on the channel. So I'm glad to see that they've done that. But you know what it's time for now? Let's, Let's get, get in the back. back. Let's <laughs> get in the back. The 009 has a length of 5.2 meters and a width of over 2 meters. So we've got high expectations for rear passenger space. Okay, Elliot, we're now back here in the second row. And I got to say... It's pretty nice. This is really nice. This is really nice. I noticed in the front you have a ton of passenger space. I mean, look at this. Look at this headroom. I feel small in here. Yes, I, I feel <laughs> I feel like a little child sitting inside of a, my 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 parents' car again. <laughs> yeah, this is crazy. This is crazy. This is an amazing amount of amount of interior space. I'm gonna okay. Let's see what kind of features we have. <gasps> Elliot. Oh my God. We're going full fighter jet. We're going oh. full fighter jet. Boom. I've got, let's see, heated seats, cooled seats. This is adjustable, obviously. Rake here. Oh. We've got adjustable leg bolsters down here. Oh. We've also got, let's Turn the see. Knob. Turn the knob. Feel the, feel Ooh. that. Ooh, <laughs> massage, massage. <Yeah. laughs> and it looks like, and it's, I've never, I've never seen a, knob adjustable massage you no. can adjust the position and style of massage using this little knob and then it looks like yes you click the knob to adjust the strength so to speak of the massage setting oh my god that's awesome and this is all metal this is all like metal buttons met the dial is, is metal it's, it's really nice to the touch yes we were told that the materials are not necessarily the exact same that we'll see on production but the material quality in the Zeker mm. 001, that's one of the things about it, is that material quality is quite good. So I, I do expect it and hope that a decent amount of these metal parts will make it to production. Oh, here we go. <laughs> See ya. <It's, laughs> I'm going to go for a trip really quick. Okay, oh we could have a race. We could. <laughs> we could. We could. Way to tell which one of us weighs more. Um, so a ton of functions here. Let me see what we got here. Flip this up. We got a table. We got a table. Nice little leather strap. Ooh. Boom. Oh, that's feel that. That's 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 metal for yeah, sure. That's, that's metal. full on metal. Leather, leather padded here, so you can put your laptop mm. or whatever. Let me close that. We have our cup holder. 
Let me see. Let me see. Do we have any other kind of storage areas and stuff? Oh, ah, we have our type C USB ports. This is a 60 watt fast charger. This one's 60 watt fast charge. That's awesome. And a little bit of a storage area here. So you can like take the, let me take my phone and demonstrate. You can pop your phone right there. That's pretty great. And then storage compartments down here. Would you mind your head? Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> That's a big screen. That looks to be something like a, I would say it's probably about the same as the one on the front. Yeah, about Maybe 15 inches or about something? About 15, 16 inches. Yeah. Holy moly. I've got the remote here. So we got the remote. <laughs> Let me close this little storage thingy down here. Oh my gosh. I think, have you What's noticed on your this? Door? What's on your door? I have a proper LCD touchscreen here. Whoa. So I can adjust my uh, air conditioning, the fans, where the fans are pointing, on a screen in the door. Air conditioning, so loud, turn off, yeah, so sorry. cold. Oh, it's cold. Off, off, off. It's cold. That's incredible. You've got one as well, I think, just I, hidden behind here. I do, which is my door is closed, so I can't reach it, I guess. What about these other buttons? These are. Oh, that's to open the door. Is that? No. That's to open, I think this is the sunroof. Oh, that's to open the sunroof. Oh, ah. okay. And then open my window. I, that's oh. my window. Oh, I can open your window. You can open my window. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Oh, that's awesome. And that looks like a lock, unlock button there. Yeah, yeah, unlock button and then open and close doors over there. So this is this is pretty high tech. I see a I see a microphone button over here, which indicates that I could speak to the car. It has voice mm. commands. I think they told us that the voice commands are not necessarily ready again. This is pre-production, but <sighs> I'm just enjoying my massage right now. You know how you know how <laughs> me too. <laughs> you know how they talk all the time these companies about how we've got a first class cabin experience. This feels like first class. It actually does for this, the first time ever. I this think this really feels like first class. Hold on, let me hit a button really quick. What's that one? Oh no. Oh, that one's I think not functional. This one was, I think is supposed to be, uh, this one's to full Ooh. layout, but this one is to return you to the original position oh. so that you can more easily get out of the car. I want to check out the third row space. You sit there, you be my demonstrator and I will get into the third okay. row. Let me jump out. Easy. One touch button down here for uh, moving the seat forward. Very easily done. This is huge. This is one of the largest kind of yeah. access holes. How, what was what would be the word for this? Opening. Opening. Thank you. <laughs> I like to refer to things as access holes, actually, um, that I've ever seen. Like I can literally just walk in. I I don't even barely have to. I don't have to twist my body at all. Or bend your head too much. Or bend my head very much either. Okay, now I'm in the third row. How would you describe your current leg room? Plentiful. Plentiful. Current. Four solid fingers of space back here. I've got, I've got so much leg room here. Have you got? I'm telling you, okay, I'm wow, telling okay. you, like really, this is this is really impressive. This is, this is what a 3.205 <laughs> meter uh, wheelbase will bring you. The seat back here, quite comfortable. Man, this is not bad. This is not bad. I could, I could show. Oh, the materials. Oh, there's a really nice, like more suede back here. Uh, 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 on this area. This Ooh. is nice and soft. This leather is soft. Third row occupants aren't really losing out that much. The 009 comes with a dual motor powertrain making 400 kilowatts and 688 newton meters of torque, giving it an official 0 to 100 kilometer per hour time of just 4.5 seconds. It also has air suspension as standard. So Elliot, I don't know how you feel about this, but I'm pretty excited about the fact that we're seeing more and more EV powertrains being put into luxury cars like this, whether it's an MPV or a sedan or an SUV. I just think that luxury or rather EV powertrains are pretty suitable for luxury cars. They've got the instant off line torque and they're generally just quieter than an internal combustion engine. So pretty exciting development in my mind. Definitely, and I think both of us agree that this is the first MPV to truly deliver an airline first class experience on the inside. Yeah, definitely. Like people talk all the time about how, or other brands talk all the time about how like ours is like a first class airplane cabin. This is the first one to really make that happen. To, yeah, to really feel that way when you're in the inside. Uh, obviously, we're not gonna be able to drive it today. This is a static experience, but I'm pretty excited to see what it's like to have 
400 kilowatts or 520-ish horsepower in, in an MPV. I know, that's insane. It's a lot of mass to move around. <laughs> I just want to know what that's like, but we're going to have to save that for another video. That's going to have to do it for today's video.